84 apartments, one bedroom apartments, um, nine of those are accessible units and people have to qualify those for under a disability um, and that's verified. So rent is based on their income, um, it's affordable housing. Exactly. We can maintain a wait list of over a hundred people all the time. I know I have a resident who moved here in 1987. She plans on being here quite some more, <laughs> some more time, you know, and so that that's amazing to see. You know, we currently had a resident who just moved out after 21 years mm -hmm. of residency and she, only to be with family. So that, that also attains to why our, our waiting list is so long. They're not moving out, you know, um, and, and that just means that they really enjoy where they're at. If they need assistance with Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, um, uh, senior services, getting a homemaker, communicating with their authorized agent or their family member about what their desire is for their future, for where they're living and how their health is going, to advocate on behalf of that resident for what's going on, they get all of that here on site. And on top of that, we offer events for our yes. residents. We put on meals. We put on... You know, gatherings every Monday, our building has bingo at six o'clock. All the residents really enjoy oh, that. Um, many times we play Wii with the residents, Wii Bowling, that was huge for a long time. Um, we do have a Trivia Pursuit group that meets twice a week and, and they play uh, Trivial Pursuit, which keeps them nice and sharp. We do holiday parties as much as possible. You know, on Halloween they dress up in their costumes and they come down and they love it. I had a resident who was 98, she dressed up every single year. We do a door decorating contest in December, um, and I had someone do an igloo, turn their whole door with lunch plates, with styrofoam lunch plates into an igloo. The sense of community is huge. If a resident or a staff member notices somebody's behavior that's unusual for them, and maybe there's a medical condition, we're able to relay that to a family member that would not ever have known otherwise. Right. And the residents do that for each other as well. We typically have residents that come and check in once a day with us to see how we're doing. Oh. Um, and it's, you know, it's fun to hear about how, you know, how their day went or if they have any plans for the weekend and, you know, make them feel welcome, make them know that we care about them. When we think about grief, we think about grief as somebody passing away. We don't think about that resident grieving the fact that they no longer are an active mother. Yes. They don't have to get up and be responsible and care for their family. They need someone to care for. So they care for each other. They care for a neighbor. They care for staff. They want to know how my kids are doing, how my family is doing. You know, they want to offer that advice or just have a conversation about parenting. You know, you lose your siblings. You lose your parents. You've lost your home. You've lost your career, which is sometimes your purpose in life. So they've had a constant cycle of grieving. And I don't think we all recognize that. And so when we give them family, we give them community. We're replacing the things that they've lost and giving them more purpose to do things. You know, and so I think that's really what River Rain does for our residents is that we are giving them back something that they've lost.